Crystal at the time was 28 years old. She lived in Orange County with her father. Her boyfriend, Garrett, and five co-workers were staying at the Holiday Inn Fraser Park. Several of the co-workers invited their wives or girlfriend to come up for the weekend. Crystal got there on Saturday afternoon, and about 10 o'clock, Crystal and Garrett went to bed for the evening. There was a co-worker by the name of Jonathan Padilla. And Padilla admitted in his deposition that he had consumed approximately 22 beers that evening. So shortly after midnight, an intoxicated Padilla went to the front desk clerk, Laurie Sharon. She could tell that he was intoxicated and said words to the effect of, I can see you're a little tipsy. Go back to your room or I'll call the sheriff. About 10 or 15 minutes later, Jonathan Padilla went back to the front desk. He used the name of Crystal's boyfriend, said he had left his key in the room. Laurie Sharon did not ask for any identification and gave it to Jonathan Padilla. Padilla went up to Crystal Davick's room and sexually assaulted Crystal Davick. After Crystal woke up screaming, Padilla ran out of the room with his pants around his ankles. The Holiday Inn's primary defense was that this incident was not foreseeable. They felt that there was very little crime in the area. They had never had any guest on guest crime in the hotel. So I took the deposition of every Holiday Inn employee and I asked them, uh, is it foreseeable if you give someone a key to a room that they are not registered to, that they could enter that room? The answer is yes. And ultimately I would ask, is it foreseeable that someone could use a key to enter a room uh, that they are not registered to and assault a guest? The answer is yes. So we were able to play that deposition videotape for the jury to overcome the defense of foreseeability. On the first day of trial, the defense filed a motion in limine asking the judge to exclude any argument or any evidence of what is called the reptile theory. The judge granted that motion and limited all of the evidence at trial to this one incident and this one desk clerk. In fact, in the middle of my closing argument, Judge Chapin stopped me, dragged me out of the courtroom, and chastised me for making an analogy between our case and another. Now there's something called the golden rule. I can't ask the jury, what if this sexual assault in a hotel happened to your daughter? So what I did in order to illustrate that concept is I called Crystal Davick's father as a witness. Crystal's father is completely deaf. So using the sign language interpreter, I asked the father to describe at two in the morning when he received a text and his daughter is telling her father that she had been sexually assaulted and to describe for me how Crystal appeared when she returned home from Bakersfield after the sexual assault. The jury could see for themselves the tears in his eyes and the description that he used through that sign language interpreter, and it was very powerful. Crystal had no economic damages. She had no real medical bills. She had not lost any work. And so in a, a venue like Bakersfield, we thought 3.5 million for strictly emotional distress damages was an excellent result.